Hi everybody! So last week we talked about images and matrices and about the general theory behind computer vision. Today I'm going to show you how to process images with Python and more specifically I'll show you how to process images with the Pillow or Pill library. Now this may not be the most famous library out there, we are all familiar with OpenCV, okay? However, I find OpenCV to be way more complicated. So let me show you how Pillow will make your life so much easier. Okay, so as you can see, I've already mounted my drive and I've also uploaded the path to my images. So this is how the directory looks like inside my drive. Okay, and if you guys are not sure how to do this, check out my simple SMS spam filter uh, because I show you how to do this step by step. I just didn't want to repeat myself. And also, if you guys want to use the exact same images that I'm using, you can download them from the link in the description. It just links to my uh, GitHub account where you can uh, get the exact same PNGs. Cool, and once we're done with this, we can actually start with importing a few useful pillow functions. So from pill import image with a capital I, image chops in camel case and image filter. And these are the three functions we'll be focusing on in this video. Okay, so we'll start with loading our image into Python. We can simply do this with image dot open and inside the round brackets we'll specify the path to our image. So let's use image X first. Okay and we'll assign it to a variable x. And we can do the exact same thing with o. So o equals image dot open image o. And I will check how these images look like. So x looks like this, okay? O looks like this. Now this image object has a few cool attributes. So if we type o dot size, okay, and actually let's do this in a neat print statement. Okay, print size of the image. Okay, o point size. And we see that the size is 256 pixels by 256 pixels. If we wanna find out the color mode, which we can do with color mode, okay, we'll simply type O dot mode. Let's run it again. And the color mode is RGB, as you can tell. And if we do the exact same thing for um, X, let's do it first so we're consistent. X mode and run the cell again. We can see that the images have the exact same size and the exact same color mode, which is exactly what we need to perform mathematical operations. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to display both images one besides the other, just so we'll have a reference uh, for our transformations. And I'm going to use matplotlib for this. So I'm going to speed up this part, but you guys can copy the code from GitHub. And we got it. Now we can finally begin transforming the images. So the first thing I want to show you is how to merge these images into one. And we can simply do this with multiplication. So the way to multiply in pillow is by typing image chops, okay? And then multiply, and inside the round brackets, we'll specify both images that we'd like to multiply, which is X and O, cool. And we'll assign this to a variable named, um, let's say merged, okay? This is a good description to the image, and let's just comment that this is multiply images. Okay, and let's take a look at how merged would look like. Okay, and it looks like we got exactly what we wanted because we merged both images, we overlaid them, and we can clearly see that we, they have a common area in between, and this would be this forest green color that is common both to the O and the X. Okay, cool, we can move on. You actually might be tempted to try addition instead of multiplication to do this. However, if you're going to add these two images together, and let's create a new variable for that, let's call it add, okay? Uh, you can do this with image chops again, and then add instead of multiply, and we do X and O. We're going to print this. What you're going to get is only the common area 
in between them. Okay, so if we'll print merged again, this would be the forest green area. And speaking of colors, let me show you how to convert the color mode with pillow. So first I'm going to add a comment, adding two images because I'm going to forget about it later on. Okay, and we'll do another comment for convert color mode. Cool. So the way to convert is just as it sounds. Okay, so we're typing the name of the image. Let's do merged dot convert. And inside the round brackets, we specify the color mode, which is L for grayscale. Okay, so let's call this um, variable grayscale. Okay, and we're going to print it to see the results. Perfect, we got it. And similarly, we can convert this into any color mode. And if we want to get it as a binary image, we'll just replace L with one. And this should create a binary image. But if I run the cell, ugh, it looks disgusting. It has nothing to do with what I had in mind when I was thinking about a binary image. Okay, so we can actually tackle this manually. Okay, because this is not going to get us very far. Okay, so what we're going to do is to access each and every individual pixel on the image, and we're going to adjust it accordingly. Okay, so we can easily do this with pixel equals merged, which is the image that we would like to process dot load. So this command will map out all the pixels so we can use them as coordinates. Okay, and now we can parse through each and every pixel in our image with a nested loop. We'll do this with for row in range uh, merged which is our image, size, dimension zero, which as you can guess, holds all 256 rows, okay? And if you're wondering why the first dimension is specified by the number zero, it's because in programming, we always start counting from zero. And now we can continue with looping through the columns, okay? So for column in range merged, size, this time dimension one. So this will result in a nested loop where I'm going to parse through each and every individual pixel to check if a certain condition is being met. And my condition is if the pixel is not white, I want it painted black. No blue or green anymore. I want them to turn black. I'm only following Jagger's instructions. Okay. So let's quickly <laughs> turn it into code with an if statement. So if pixel row column, okay, is not equal to a tuple of 255, 255, 255, which if you remember from the last video is how we represent white with RGB, okay? So if the pixel is not white, I want the exact same pixel, which is pixel row column, Okay, to be equal, sorry, to be equal to zero, 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 which is black in RGB. Okay, so if we're going to run this loop and we're going to print uh, merged again, we are getting the binary image that we were looking for. Perfect. And I want to show you what happens with images that are not in an RGB mode, because this is obviously an RGB color. Okay. What if uh, the image we'd like to use is the grayscale image and we'd like to change it into binary. So let's just uh, change it to grayscale here as well. Let's change this to grayscale here as well. And lastly, grayscale for the print statement. Okay. So because grayscale only has one color channel, AKA it only measures the intensity of black. Okay. Why? While RGB is measuring the intensity of red, green, and blue. So it has three channels. Okay. So if we only need one channel, we're not going to need these extra two numbers. Okay. So we'll adjust both colors to accommodate a one color channel. And if we rerun the cell again, 
Okay, let's let's actually um, print grayscale before, okay? And let's print grayscale after. You can see that it also results in a binary image. But what if we don't want our changes to affect the entire image? What if we only want to change the right portion of the image? We can simply tackle this inside our if statement and we can add another condition. So we'll add and row must be bigger than 128, which is a half of 256, okay? And in order for us to see the change, we'll have to rerun this cell again and get our grayscale image back, okay? And we can rerun this. And as you can see, our changes only affected the right portion of the image. Similarly, we can affect only a quarter of the image if we specify a column condition. So we can say that um, and column must also be bigger than 128. And if we rerun the cell, oh, I forgot. We have to rerun this cell again. So uh, we get our grayscale image back, okay? And if we rerun this cell, you can see that it affected only a quarter of our image. So as you can see, we are in full control of our image down to the pixel level when we use this method. Another useful transformation I wanted to show you is inversion. And for this, I'm actually going to remove these extra conditions. I'm gonna rerun the cell. And here's our binary image, which we call grayscale for some reason. So we're not gonna complain about it, okay? And we'll create a new cell where I'll show you how inversion works, okay? So let's uh, create a new variable. And before we'll write a comment, invert the image, okay? And the new variable is gonna be called invert, okay? And we're going to use image chops again. And the method we'll use is, as you can guess, invert. And we're going to include our grayscale image. We're going to, oh, I forgot the T. Okay, and we're going to print it, invert. So as you can see, it's the exact opposite of our grayscale image. Another cool transformation I wanna show you guys is rotation, okay? So let me write it as a comment, rotate. And this is the main reason why I prefer Pillow over OpenCV. So we can do this simply by creating a brand new variable, let's call it rotate, okay? And we'll assign it. Um, let's, let's say we would like to rotate our sub, subtracted image, so sub dot. And the method we're, we're using in PIL to rotate the image is simply rotate, okay? And inside the round brackets, we simply specify the degrees that we'd like to rotate it by. Um, let's say 45 degrees, okay? And let's print the image. Perfect. So the last two transformations I'm going to show you are Gaussian blur and edge detection, okay? And this comes very, very handy if you're interested in autonomous vehicles. So we'll create a brand new cell for that. And we'll start with blurring. Let's use blur. Um, and we'll assign it to a new variable also called blur. Okay, and we would like to perform uh, the transformations on our grayscale image. So on our grayscale image, we are going to assign a filter. Okay, and this filter is going to be taken of image filter. Okay, and the filter that we're going to use is Gaussian blur, as you can see. Um, and we'll also need to specify a radius to the blur. And let's say that our radius will be one. Cool. Now let's print our image. Awesome. So we can see that basically, um, let's just print grayscale here so we can compare the two. Okay, so our original image was very, very sharp along the edges. Our new image is much more blurry, and that's what we wanted to get. And in a similar way, we can also do our edge detection. Okay, so let's just comment it. Edge detection. Okay, and we'll create a new variable called edge. Select our blur image, okay, and we'll filter it using our image filter. Okay, but this time we're going to use find edges. Okay, 
and let's see how our edge detection is going to look like. Okay, let's print edge. Perfect. And this concludes the lesson for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and that you learned something new. And if you have any questions, don't be shy. Just comment them below and I'll try to help. In the meanwhile, have yourself an amazing day and I'll see you next week.